Hi, this is a two board project where this first board here is a RF switch module and it can be used for uh, sending RF in, in either direction and control it like a single pole four way switch. So these are SMA connectors and you can connect, um, for example, a signal coming in here and you can control and select which output it goes out to. Um, and the way it works here is uh, these three ICs are really just um, single pole double throw switches and they're wired up like this so you could for example direct this one to switch the RF in that direction and then this one can then choose one of these two um, uh, or the traffic could go this the the signal could go this way uh, and then you could switch to one of these two outputs uh, the reason for the strange design is with these lines is uh, these are transmission lines or waveguides and the aim is to try and keep them at 50 ohms impedance uh, which is actually uh, quite hard to do on a, a low cost four layer PCB service which is what I used and uh, with hindsight I'd probably select a different uh, waveguide method or at least try and characterise the PCB service before ordering the design I think I got it close to 50 ohms but it's not perfectly 50 ohms um, so performance is okay but it could have been a lot better I think uh, with some more effort uh, but really it is all a compromise because you have to design the particular waveguide to suit the, the 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 PCB service but also the number of layers that you're using which layers you're using uh, the PCB cost and the particular types of connectors as well uh, so all of that makes a difference uh, these parts are quite small but actually they were not too hard in the end to solder uh, the way I did that was I ended up using low temperature solder paste and that allowed me to keep these uh, heat, uh, heated up for more than 10-15 minutes uh, while I was able to you know, carefully position them and I was able to rework them as well uh, with you know, no problem damaging it at the low, with the low temperature. Uh, for the connectors, these particular connectors have got uh, very, you need a very fine soldering bit to do that. Uh, and uh, the, the procedure that I, I ended up using to do that involves blue tag as well uh, and it's all written up anyway how to do that and again this turned out to be not too difficult although it was a bit scary initially on the first one because I didn't want to ruin the board I didn't have many chances to get this right a single button here controls everything and uh, the reason for that was uh, that I wanted to make it like you know really easy to control and simple without um, disturbing the board too much while switching between them because sometimes just moving cables and wires can affect things. The, the other side of the board uh, contains the, just the, doesn't contain as much, it contains the uh, circuitry to control the, uh, the switching, the logic. Uh, so just 74HC logic gates really and nothing else here. Uh, for the power, I decided to use a two CR5 battery, and uh, I actually soldered contacts to that uh, directly to the contacts, which is a bit naughty. But uh, this should last for two or three years, I think, with normal use um, plugged into here. So um, I think that's good. It doesn't need to have a replaceable holder for that. There are a couple of bodge wires on here. I've made a mistake on the circuit, uh, but it's not too difficult to correct for that. With just some wire and moving things around a little bit. I've ri written this up as well. Here's a circuit diagram. Uh, these are the three RF switch ICs and uh, uh, the connections, the RF connectors. And <laughs> this is the main, you know, the entire pretty much uh, circuit that's required. And the rest of the circuit is just to control the switching and the, and the power as well. So here is a power entry and uh, there's some deep debouncing on the, the switch and then what happens is the signal goes here to uh, to part of circuit where I can charge this capacitor quickly but it discharges slowly in that direction so the idea is is when you press that button then a slow discharge happens and then eventually uh, this clock um, uh, is used to basically divide by two so the output uh, here is used to control the uh, the enable input on the voltage regulator so you know pressing once will turn this on pressing again will turn it off but you've got to press for a long time to turn it on or off like for a couple of seconds 
and as well as that then that switch press also goes into this 4017 and it's just controlling four outputs and then resetting itself so uh, these four outputs can be used to select one of the the, the four um, uh, RF connectors and then the rest of the circuit is really just uh, some control uh, logic to get the signals correct for the the three RF switches the second board is uh, used for basically calibrating out uh, connections and cables and things for uh, for VNAs when when using them for uh, in this case for reflection measurements and uh, this board I actually I copied this from a Texas Texas Instruments antenna design kit uh, they supplied a set of files so I basically just copied the files for the open short load and then I copied again the open to make this device and the test one and I just removed the uh, the solder mask uh, on, the, on the file there so so yeah um, there's really not, not, not much to this uh, the open is like, literally open short uh, this one there's two 040 200 ohm resistors and uh, in parallel so that's uh, 50 ohms and then for the device under test you can then you know solder whatever you want to here directly in this case I've soldered in an inductor and uh, there's also an 0402 resistor you can just about see there so I just put them in series, a 50 ohm resistor and the inductor uh, as a test just to see what uh, what that looks like on the VNA. The other side of that contains the uh, connectors. And this is it all assembled together. Uh, <laughs> admittedly it's not very ergonomic uh, but it is what it is. So yeah, here's where you can solder the component on, like I mentioned. And, uh, this then connects to the VNA to power it up I just have to press that button for a while and that light is now on it's hard to take the other uh, indicating that that's for the open so if I press the button again it switches to short load device under test and it just cycles through them and if I hold the button down then it powers off power it on again To use it once it's connected up to the VNA, then first I have to select the calibration kit from here. Okay, then. Uh, okay, uh, it's just confirming what calibration kit I've got there. If I click continue, and uh, now I'm just going to power this thing up, and it's it's set so that it's on the open. Continue. Okay, now I'm going to press the button for the short, and continue. This saves so much time, <laughs> not having to unscrew and screw the different standards. Okay, now the calibration load. Okay, that's done. And uh, now the, the load is just showing the center there. Uh, the next thing I can do now is just press that button again to see what the device under test looks like. And uh, I've got markers here for one and 500 megahertz, one gigahertz, and also 600 megahertz. So uh, this this is the, the trace of the VNA, and I can compare that with a simulation of what I expect to see. I deliberately used an inductor that came with uh, S parameters in the data sheet, uh, so I could uh, show the simulation plus the actual measured result here. And you can see that up to about 600 megahertz, the difference is quite negligible uh, but then after that th there is a slight di discrepancy between the simulator result and the measured result and um, that's shown up to one gigahertz here yeah. here's another experiment where uh, this time uh, I'm testing an amplifier and the input 
of the amplifier is connected as the device under test and the output just goes to a 50 ohm load termination here uh, so I'm looking basically at the input return loss um, uh, uh, S11 measurement at the input of the amplifier and this is the result in the VNA and if I power up the amplifier now I'm just going to power up okay. and this is the result with uh, the, the markers there are set to M1 there is set to 25 megahertz M2 is 500 megahertz and M3 is 1 gigahertz again as before I've took the S parameters from the data sheet of the amplifier and used that for the simulation and then compared that with the measured results I don't expect them to be identical because the simulation is just for a, a typical uh, amplifier and so the, there should be a, a difference but it's still reassuring to see that the difference is not so significant <laughs>